have returned welcome back we uh we hope you didn't miss us too much i miss you oh <laughs> we also hope you didn't miss us too little don't miss me too little <laughs> don't miss me too much thank you yep <laughs> i know at least two of you guys were doing that uh-huh <laughs> from home <laughs> um welcome back to crimes against folk uh I'm Ed. I'm Ash. And um, we're going to get straight into it because we have a, a kind of a couple of things to let you know before we get into our interview. We're going to do the interview sooner rather than later today, um, flipping the show around a bit. But um, first of all, Ash, you said you had a story you yeah, wanted to really, tell. Yeah, I had a really, really short story <laughs> about this morning. Okay. So I felt my very first California earthquake this morning. Oh, really? Yeah. It was weird. So <laughs> I it, I didn't even know it was an earthquake. So it happened, we woke up at around, Brad and I woke up around like 7 or 7.30 or something like that. And we're sitting in bed and playing with our phones as we normally do. And all of a sudden, I felt and heard a car crash into my living room. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked, and the best is, it was like it was really quick, and and it it was like a pretty, you know, it, it was that's or like right outside, like maybe yeah. it was like right out, like felt like it was right outside, but loud enough and strong enough to like cause some kind of a, a for us to feel it, right? Yeah. So I was like, what was that? And the best is, I'm looking, I look over at Brad, and he just doesn't react like a true <laughs> California native. <laughs> and I was like, I looked at him, I go, I mean, are you going to go like investigate to see what that was? <laughs> Do you want to go see what bear just crashed into our living room? <laughs> or what pack of wild dogs just knocked over some massive piece of furniture in our house? And he was like, that was an earthquake. I was like, what? He was like, how did you not know that was an earthquake? I'm like, how would I know it was an earthquake if I've never felt an earthquake before? <laughs> so, I'm from Arizona. I know. <laughs> and he's like, oh, it was a little guy. <laughs> just like totally unaffected. And I just got like really excited. I was like, oh my God, it was my first California earthquake. I'm so proud. <laughs> I love to tell the tale. <laughs> wow. So the cool thing was I looked it up on my phone immediately and... They already had the information for it. I just like looked up like Earthquake Ramona right now. <laughs> and, oh, wow. And turns out it was 18 miles away and it was a 3.6. Huh. Okay. So it was a little baby. And and to be fair to my car crash um, uh, scenario that was playing out in my head, Brad said he said it did feel different. Like normally there's like a rumble and kind of a a more long. This was like kind of like a little explosion. He's like, yeah, I've never really felt one like that one before. It was really weird. Just kind of like I think it was so close to us. I mean, it was a small earthquake, luckily, but it was so close to us that we yeah. felt this like little explosion. You know, <laughs> and then that was it. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Great. I was kind of excited and also very happy it wasn't bigger than a 3.6. I'm not really sure I want to feel one bigger than a 3.6. I'm good. We can stop there. Hear that, Earthquake <laughs> Gods? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can. We, we don't have to go any further, uh, Earth. You're yeah. fine. No, that's cool. We're <laughs> You're fine done. where you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, yeah, that's crazy. I've, I've, I've never felt an earthquake before, so I don't... I'm I'm uh, simultaneously uh, jealous and thankful. Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was really little. Like it was. <laughs> it didn't sh didn't even shake anything in our house. It was just like mini explosion. <laughs> um, the uh, second thing we would like to tell you is we have some pretty big news yeah. to share. Um, you want to go ahead and 
tell him, Ash? <laughs> All right, I'll tell him. <laughs> I know you're really. I, I, I'm very excited too, but I know you're super excited about it. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. I am pretty excited about this, especially because you know it's our. We got our very first uh, endorsement for Crimes Against Folk, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's a good one. We we're really really happy to be working with this company, and the company is EV, as in Electro Voice, yeah. and they are sponsoring Crimes Against Folk with two beautiful podcast microphones. Mm-hmm. These are not them <laughs> that we're talking into right now. No, we're, getting we're not using them, them yet. Next week. So if you guys tune into next week, you will see and hear our beautiful new microphones. And we're so thankful that EV wants to work with us. Yeah. And I mean, it's just their, their stuff is absolutely incredible, like top of the line. So we're really, really excited to test out these mics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're, we're getting the, um, they're, they're giving us to, um, uh, RE twenties mm-hmm. and, uh, they are um, those microphones. I've used them a lot in the studio. They're they're very famous studio microphones. They're very famous um, broadcast microphones. And of course, now that more people are getting into podcasts, they've become very popular podcasting microphones. But they've been around for a very long time, and uh, yeah. so it's really exciting to actually get to uh, use one uh, for uh, for some. You know, I've only ever gotten to use them kind of in limited capacities when I was recording music, but. Now I get to use one to do voice stuff, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's going to be pretty exciting to to work with that. Yeah, on absolutely. the podcast in particular, and also to play around with some different recordings in in the home or home studios as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. So thank you, EV. Thank you, um, Evie. We appreciate it. You'll be and, hearing uh, us talk about them a lot. <laughs> yes, a lot. We're super excited about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. Uh, go us! Yay! Very <laughs> um, first CAF sponsorship. Yep. Good first job, one. Ed. <laughs> Good job, Ash. Thank you. <laughs> we're on our way. Yeah. Um. So, uh, without further ado, we're going to get into our uh, guest segment. Uh, we are bringing on the uh, yeah. inimitable um, Michael Bashkin. You know what, Ed? I actually want to talk about one more thing real quick, if you don't mind, just because okay. I want to talk about our show next week mm-hmm. because uh, it's less than two weeks away. It's with our show with High to Plateau Productions. So we're doing a we're doing our like a full Witherward show. We'll do some covers as well, probably some Simon and Garfunkel stuff as well as some of the other stuff you guys love. Yeah. And new songs. We're doing brand new songs that you probably haven't heard. So um it's the the stream, the payment is kind of pay what you want. There's a five dollar option, a ten dollar option, and then a enter in the amount option. If that's if you guys really don't have much to give and you want that to be zero, that's totally fine with us. We'd rather have you there, um, especially for people who are you know not working right now. I, we get that. Um, but whatever you guys can afford, we hope you join. We're really excited to actually play some music for you. It's been a really long time. So I'm going to drop <laughs> that link here in the chat, and then we will also put it in the show notes. So yep. please reserve your online seat. And we're excited to go into that. But anyway, Woo-hoo. side note, back to cooler things like Michael Bashkin. <laughs> um, we uh, we met Michael at the uh, NAMM show in 2017, I believe. And yeah. um, was it 2017? Uh, yes. Or was it 2016? No, it was 2017, I'm pretty sure. 17. Um, and uh, we met him because we were... Uh, our friend uh, Jason Costell was helping us get set up with a uh, endorsement with Avian Guitars at the time, who had just relaunched their brand and had designed, uh, had had commissioned Michael to do a bunch of new designs for their line. Um, if I'm getting this wrong, I'm sure you can correct me. <laughs> well, which is this guitar here. If you're watching on the live yep. stream, you can see it. We'll put it in show notes otherwise. But it's this, um, this very guitar. Yeah, and uh, so and we just kind of kept in touch with him after the show every now and again, and uh, and uh, he's been just he's just a really cool dude and an incredible luthier. Um, he has his own podcast called Luthier on Luthier, mm-hmm. and uh, it is it is uh, gaining a lot of steam, and uh, it's it's really exciting to see it's exciting to see that kind of stuff happen. Um, so. We will go ahead and give him a call.
how are you um, okay. doing, Michael? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Uh, you know, alive and kicking and surviving 2020. All right. That's the most we could ask for in 2020, I think. Yes. I, in 2021, I, I will be asking for more, but let's just get through this year. <laughs> <laughs> Less than a month to go. We can do this. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. How have you been uh, weathering the um, the pandemic as far as your business goes? I mean, has it been, has it picked up? Has it slowed down? Is it the same? Or uh, It's actually picked up. And I, I, when the pandemic first hit, uh, it was certainly not my expectation. Uh, you know, I got quite worried. But it turns out that uh, people are not going on vacation. They're not going out to restaurants. They're staying home and uh, buying language apps and, uh, Hey, playing guitar. So <laughs> nice. I actually noticed that my business, uh, increased. Um, and I, I, I say that with a, a great amount of sensitivity because I realized that for a lot of people, it's been, been very, very difficult. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, my heart goes out to them. You know, I work with a, a lot of musicians and my heart certainly goes out to them. I know that in some cases they're you know, their touring schedule and their income just completely, uh, completely disappeared. So yeah, sure did. Uh, but yeah. specific to me in the, uh, in making guitars, it's been, been good. Yeah. Well, you know, you work really hard and you're also absolutely incredible at what you do and, and, and you deserve all the success in the world. So I'm really, really happy to hear that. And it actually brings me a little much. bit of hope to hear stories like that <laughs> because you do, you really mostly hear the stories of, of despair and it's just so nice to hear something positive. So thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people are, uh, they are at home and they are making music and, uh, you know, I, I've tuned in to a lot of Instagram live and some Facebook live shows and made some made paid paid some ticket prices that way to try and support musicians. So, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get through it. Yeah. Yeah, we will. Any um, any particular project that you're you're uh, you care to share with us that you're, you're proud of at the moment or that's exciting that you've done in the in your shop there? Uh, but, you know, a lot of it's just been kind of what I've been doing for the last 20 years, um, just making steel string custom guitars. Um, the last couple guitars I made were interesting. They were for one client. He ordered kind of a, a two guitars at once and they were pretty much exactly the same except for the wood combination. So it was interesting as a guitar maker to be able to really a B the two and hear the differences in the woods and either, uh, confirm what I thought I knew or, uh, in, in some cases, uh, show me that I was completely wrong. <laughs> so. <laughs> so which one was it? Uh, it was a bit of both. Okay. <laughs> Do you get to do that very often? Like compare, I like actually do sort of an A B of that. I mean, it's I know it's a little bit of a, a labor to build a guitar, but do you do you get to do that often? Uh, not enough. Yeah. Not enough. I yeah, I generally build guitars in small batches of anywhere from three to five, and certainly if they're done, um, I'm going to turn off this fan. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know if that was coming through. No, no worries. Uh, yeah, any, any guitars that I build in a batch, I'll certainly compare and contrast them. And I find that a, a being really gives you a different experience of the guitar versus just playing it solo. Yeah. Um, if you just have one guitar, I, I don't know, your ear tends to adapt to it. You tend to develop certain expectations. And if it's the only guitar you have to play, then, you know, you, you kind of... Uh, maybe, you know, you, you become accustomed to it. Mm -hmm. And then if you are able to A-B it against a different guitar, your perception of that instrument can really change. No, it's true. Like, I, I've, um, I've, I have Ashley's old Martin uh, with me, and I, I think I picked it up to play it uh, like a, maybe a couple weeks ago. And I was just playing, I'm like, wow, this is brighter than I remember. And I think it's just because I'm so used to Ashley's guitar, it's a little mellower 
than mm-hmm. than this one as far as the sound balance goes. I think that I was just used to it, and so it's hard for me to judge exactly how this Martin sounds now. <laughs> oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, what uh, have you? Do you still have your like repair business? Do you still do a lot of repair and stuff like that, or? Well, it's a good question. I am doing very little repair these days. Okay. So uh, I, I mostly just do repair for long-term customers, uh, friends, people I just can't say no to. <laughs> but I'm really, not, I'm really not taking on any new, uh, new clients, and that's just because the, the, uh, the guitar building part has really been uh, particularly strong in the last couple of years, and you know, building a guitar from start to finish, working with a client. It's just a long, long process yeah. and there's deposits involved. And that's really, you know, where my commitment is. And I, I, I did, I have faced a point uh, several times in my career, but especially about oh, two, maybe three years ago where I had so many guitars in my shop for repair. I could barely walk in here <laughs> and I had, uh, and I had a huge order list. Uh, well, huge for me. Yeah. And it was just I was just spreading myself too thin, and I I felt like I really needed to uh, to kind of sort of choose either was I going to be primarily a guitar builder or primarily in repair. And it's a hard choice because I I really like both. I really like both. I'd be happy doing either one. Mm. Um, and I also have a really hard time saying no to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so great, though, that you have so many custom orders. I know that's that's where your your heart lies, and you're you're so 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 you make such beautiful guitars. So mm-hmm. it's great that more people oh, thank, get to enjoy them. Thank you very much. Well, and I love that I get to I have your name in the middle of my guitar here, even though it's an avian. It's it's Michael Bashkin designed. <laughs> and um, correct. Yes. I remember. A little, a little different. Uh-huh. I remember when we came to your shop, and. And I had just gotten the guitar, I think, or like maybe, you know, a month or two before then we, we came on tour through, through, uh, Fort Collins and we, we stopped and we had lunch with you and we got to see your shop, which was really cool. And I was telling you how, cause when I, when I got this, this guitar, when I got the endorsement from Avian, I said, I really wanted the songbird model, but I wanted it in Rosewood. And they told me they were out of the rosewood and that I could only have it in mahogany. So they sent me a guitar and I had been playing it for a couple of months and I brought it to you and I said, yeah, it's just too bad. It's mahogany, not rosewood. (laughs) And you said, what? This is rosewood. And I was like, no, it's not. They said it was mahogany. And you said, do you see that hat right there? I will eat that hat <laughs> if we find out this is mahogany i remember right. that I, I guess uh i was pretty emphatic about it <laughs> well and then i got a rosewood guitar like immediately so it works out great yeah. for me yeah <laughs> all right yeah. but i could and now, tell the difference. now we all are on the same page as to what's rosewood and what's mahogany yep <laughs> <laughs> now we know <laughs> we had no idea i mean all i knew is it sounded good so <laughs> all right um, that how that he, is what matters. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, how has the uh, podcast been progressing for you? Have you been having fun doing that as well? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I, uh, I for the listeners, those who may may not know, I uh, host and produce a podcast for the Fretboard Journal magazine called Luthier and Luthier, where I interview other guitar builders, occasionally other uh, a, a musician. And it's I'm um, up to uh, the 49 episodes right now. It's nice. once a month, so it's been going for a couple of years, and it's been a, a lot of fun. I've gotten to know a lot of people through the podcast, and uh, before the pandemic, when I would travel to guitar shows or maybe give a presentation, I was really pleasantly surprised by the number of people who uh, introduced themselves and said they're podcast listeners. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a niche thing. It, it appeals to the, uh, you know, the hyper, hyper guitar geek, <laughs> uh, but it's, I've got a pretty, uh, I, I think I've got a pretty dedicated, uh, listener base and 
And, um, you know, thankfully this past year, I got a, a, a sponsor for the podcast. Oh, so great. Yeah. Which was really nice. I kind of, you know, there are expenses with the podcasts, yeah. uh, not to mention the time involved in it too. And so that really made it easier for me to keep the podcast going. So who's your sponsor? And should, yes. Thank you for asking. I should mention them. <laughs> Good point. Uh, uh, Dream Guitars. They are a, uh, a boutique kind of high-end custom guitar shop out of uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Ooh. Excellent. That's yeah, so it's a good, cool. good fit for the podcast. Yeah, yeah, that sounds perfect. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Do you have any of your guitars out, out there at that shop? Actually, I don't. Uh, it, it's in, in some ways, I'm actually more comfortable with them not being a dealer of my guitars yeah. and being mm-hmm. a sponsor of the podcast because I really, through the podcast, I never wanted to seem like I was promoting myself or my own guitars. Ah, right. And, um, yeah, it's just not the, the intent. It was really, you know, the intent is for me just to have conversations with guitar builders that I would want to have, you know, anyway, in other words, that if we were just going out for for coffee or beer and no one was listening, I'd like to think that, you know, this is pretty close to the conversation we would have. (laughs) It's just that in this case, the world is invited to listen. Yeah. I like that kind of stuff. Uh, we've listened to a couple episodes. We were on the road, and uh, there was, I, I don't know, I think they were just fascinating because you get that inside look. That I mean, you know, as Ash kind of alluded, we, we don't really know a lot about that world. So it for us, it's actually really interesting to get a look into what it's like and hear, hear two experts talk about it. I think if you listen to experts talk about something you're not very interested, you're not, not, you're not very knowledgeable in, then that can only kind of push your knowledge further in my mm-hmm. opinion, because it makes you more curious about what's going on. So yeah. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. That's why I'm glad that things like Luther and Luther exist because especially if you're a musician, I think at some point you're going to be like, well, wow, I wonder what, what, what goes into making something like this and who are the people behind that? So, yeah, actually that's how I got started in guitar building was because I was a guitar player first and then I had a chance to see somebody working on my guitar and the light bulb went off and I was like, wow, (laughs) I guess people need to work on these things and they need (laughs) to fix them and then they need to build them. And that sounds really cool. So I want to check, check that out more. That's cool. Did you do any formal training or was it all kind of self-taught stuff? Uh, it was mostly self-taught. I mm-hmm. started in with uh, with guitar making and repair pre-internet days. Ah. So it was really just some books and VHS tapes. And then once I kind of started, got going, I uh, worked with a, in a local music store uh, helping them do some repairs, real real basic stuff. I was just kind of getting my feet wet. Mm-hmm. And then after uh, a couple years, I took um, some one-week workshops, but I never went to any kind of extended formal training or did a uh, did an extended apprenticeship or anything like that. Wow. Wow, that's impressive. I, that I love impressive. that people can just learn and just self-taught. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, should say, I should say, though, that that – in retrospect, that's not. Uh, I wish I I had different opportunities. Yeah, you know. And if someone's getting started today, I wouldn't tell them to do it the same way that I did it. If well, someone sure were I mean, to get started today, or were interested in um, learning how to uh, become luthier, which or build guitars for those of you who don't mm-hmm. know what luthier was, which I did not know what luthier was like. Until about three years ago, when I was at, sadly, okay. I was yeah. like, "Oh, it's a guitar maker." Got it. Um, <laughs> but if they were to want to get into such a profession, what would your advice be? My advice would be if they have the the resources, the the financial resources, and the time and space in their life to do this, would be to go to first go to a luthier school. Uh, there are. are couple good ones in the U.S. Uh, there's several around the world. Um, and use that as an introduction. And, and those schools can be anywhere from 
oh, you know, uh, six months to a year uh, to maybe even a two year long program. And then once you graduate from those schools, you, uh, in my opinion, uh, you are not ready to, to hang out a shingle uh, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, enter the world professionally. But what you are ready to do is approach uh, other guitar make established guitar makers, uh, repair shops and um, and start working for them or get an apprenticeship with the best guitar maker you can. Uh, most guitar makers I know, if they do take on apprenticeships or employees, they don't train from scratch. The, you have to go to one of these schools first mm. just so you can kind of be familiar with the, the lingo and some of the tooling and concepts, and you don't have to start from, from ground zero. Right. Um, if sense. you don't have the, I'd say, the financial resources and the time to be able to do that type of thing, then, you know, you just got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and uh, get on YouTube and do a lot of reading and talk to many, uh, talk to as many people as you can and, and figure it out. Yeah. The Luthier School of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There, there's a lot, of, a lot of information out there. So. No, it makes sense because, like, I, you know, when I when I um, was studying audio production, I took a couple of classes at a community college to see if I liked it, and then I decided mm-hmm. to go to a full on like nine month school in uh, Nashville. And yeah. then they usually try to get you to intern at a studio, at a big studio, to kind of see, well, what is this? If you're going to go to do the big the big stuff, work on the big projects, what is it really going to be like? Mm-hmm. And after that, I decided I did not want to do that and just record oh. <laughs> in my, yeah. you know, in my bedroom or whatever. Um, but sure. the knowledge has served me, so I think that's I I um I think kind of more focused programs like that um, do really help for someone who do mm-hmm. if they're not sure if they want to or they just need to kind of I need all this information kind of like right now. So yeah, yeah, it, it's a good point in that I think. Uh, it's just as important to find out, you know, whether you, if, if you want to do it or not, because a lot of people like the idea of being a, um, guitar maker or doing guitar repair, yeah. just as somebody may like the idea of being a recording engineer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, it's a tremendous amount of hard work, you know, and you really gotta, you gotta hustle. And, uh, you know, if you're just sitting in your chair thinking about, yeah, that, that sounds really cool. The, the reality of it is uh, you are going to work your tail off. <laughs> and you got you to gotta really want to do it to make it happen. Do you yeah. find it to be a competitive industry? No. Oh, yeah. I, and I say I, I didn't hesitate at all no. because <laughs> there's, a, there's actually an, an unusual degree of, uh, I, I would say, uh, camaraderie, you know, between uh, luthiers, both in building and repair. There's a tremendous amount of sharing of techniques uh, because wow. I think the the craft is in itself is in a renaissance where, you know, there's so many new ideas, there's new technology, new techniques that you you find yourself, if you are open to sharing, that you'll get a lot more than you uh, than you give out. Wow, that's really I, nice. I guess to I hear. wouldn't have guessed that. Yeah, it is nice to hear. Yeah, I do. I I did see the camaraderie, like um, you know, the luthier world. Like Ed said, it's it's a world we knew nothing about until we met you and and you know Jason Costell and Mike Baranek all at, at Nam back in 2017. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, it's it's just like the biggest eye opening experience ever. And mm-hmm. we went to uh, we got invited to that that party at Santa Cruz Guitar, and we're like, wow, all these all these luthiers are like friends with each other, and they're really supportive and and cool. And it was just it was it was nice to be a fly in the wall and just this whole side of an industry we knew nothing about and see like how yeah. cool and supportive you guys are of each other. Yeah. 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 And I, I it's that's really intentional. Uh, yeah. I don't necessarily know that it will always stay that way. I, I hope it does. Yeah. But right now, um, you know, there's there's millions and millions of guitars in the world and there's usually something wrong with every one of them <laughs> and there, you know, everyone can be made to play better. 
Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's, uh, you know, there's, if you're good at what you do, then I think there's plenty of work available. Yeah. Versus the musician side of the industry, which is maybe not as, (laughs) not always as um, camaraderly. (laughs) Not always. Yeah. Well, yeah. Camaraderly. Most fields are like that. You know, you're, (laughs) Yeah. competing for the same customer or the same gig and it's it's tough yeah i think though with with music and i i feel like ash shares the sentiment and i i totally agree is that um uh there doesn't need to be a lot of competition like there's i think there's enough room for everyone to make their own way nowadays especially yeah um yeah maybe not 20 no, years you- ago but now there is yeah yeah, you have a really good point, because when I think of uh, musicians or, say, painters, you know, every everyone is so uh, individualistic and unique. Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody has, you know, every musician has their own sound. And, you know, it's not like you're necessarily competing with somebody who does exactly what you do. And so I, I think there is a lot of a lot of space in there, maybe on the you know, the big corporate commercial side uh, where things tried to get, you know, packaged in certain genres, it gets a little different, but certainly on the, on the smaller circuit, you know, people who are, are fans of you guys are, you know, it's because you, there's no one else who does what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I I don't think it has to be that way. And, And yeah, everyone there's, there's nobody, that's better than somebody else in, in music as far as I'm concerned. It's just just different. So you don't you don't need to be as as uh, coveted about things, you know. <laughs> but it happens. Right. I mean it happens, you know, and and sometimes <laughs> sometimes if you do open yourself up, you get burned. But you know what? It's just something you have to learn to really let that go and just continue being you and doing you and not worrying about if the other person's going to burn you or not because it, yeah. it, otherwise yeah. it's just going to create more chaos. So I just try to be as open as possible, which is part of the reason we we wanted to start this podcast by, you know, sharing what we know with other people and having them share what they know with us and other people. And Mm -hmm. whether you're a musician or a luthier or another podcast host or or whatever it is under the music umbrella, there's so much that we all can learn from each other. And it doesn't, it, it can be more camaraderie. I like this new word I invented, so I'm just going (laughs) to stick with it. Yeah. I like it too. Thank you. (laughs) Camaraderie. Um, one of the things that we like to do when we have someone on the show is to share like a story of their experience, whether it's in the music industry or connected to music or connected to making or being creative. If there's something that kind of sticks out, it doesn't have to be funny. It doesn't have to be sad. It can be whatever you want, but something kind of memorable, a memorable story that maybe sticks out in your career that you wouldn't mind sharing. Hmm. Uh, boy, that, that's a big question. There's, <laughs> there's a lot to choose from. I guess the first place my mind went was uh, more just for me the uh, emotional connection to music. Yeah. And uh, the, the 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 two, I'd say maybe you know, top in the top five musical moments in my life were actually uh, one was. Uh, Going to see BB King at the Beacon Theater Ooh. in New York City. I think it was 1989, but uh, it could have been 88. I don't know. It could have been 87. Anyway, <laughs> it was a long time ago, and I was a, a huge BB King fan. And we got there really early, and uh, got right up in front of the stage, uh, right in front of his microphone. And uh, you know, he, uh, I knew all the <clears throat> words to his songs and. You know, I had to I had to look up at him. I had to crane my neck to kind of watch him. That's how close I was. Uh-huh. And every once in a while, you know, I feel like his eye would open up and he'd look down and just like, who is this little white kid singing on my songs? <laughs> and um, anyway, it was a great show. And after the show, he, you know, he walked off the stage and then he he came back on stage to to take a bow. And, um, and he walked all the way from, you know, from the the side of the stage back to the center stage and he handed me the pick that oh. he played the show with 
And so, uh, you know, for, uh, so that was, uh, that was a, a great, great moment for me. And I also got a guitar string that he, uh, he busted off of his, his guitar. Uh, so, uh, not only was it a, a, one of the best concerts I've been to, but I, I got some, some epic souvenirs from it. Oh my gosh. And the, the other thing, uh, I would say just how I've, I've been affected or yeah, really, if I, music really affects me and the power of it is there's a, uh, there was a documentary made, uh, uh, I think it was called, um, of course, I can't remember it right now. It was, it was either uh, Brave at Heart or Saint, not Brave Heart. Um, uh, okay, well, let's skip the name. It'll probably come to me tonight at two in the morning. But anyway, it was it was about a guy who worked in a, a senior's home, and he, he uh, uh, they did a, made a chorus. And it was all a cappella. And they would sing, you know, everything from James Brown to David Bowie to Bob Dylan, you know, U2. And, um, nice. and they all were, you know, these were not professional singers. Um, but something about the energy that he could create, you know, with this group, Young at Heart Singers. I think that's the name of the documentary. Okay. And, um, and then, you know, so they would go around and they would perform. And they went and they performed in a in a in a jail, in a prison, and they sang um, "Forever Young" to this group of prisoners. And you know, I was watching it on a TV with little half-inch speakers, and there was something about the you know the energy of that moment and the meaning of the song, and the ideas of redemption. And uh, you know, I was I'll never forget that. And, wow. Uh, that moment. So maybe if I watched it again, I wouldn't have the same experience, but young and heart singers, excellent musical documentary, just about the, you know, the power of music. And I know I'm not involved in music in that sense as a musician, but uh, being a guitar maker, I I get to sort of, maybe I have, uh, I can ride on the coattails of musicians by (laughs) helping them make make music. So. Absolutely. 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 I mean, that's, that's, I think it it would be sort of like if, you know, a graphic designer starts seeing their, their designs on t-shirts walking all over the city. I mean, I think, I feel like that Mm -hmm. would be kind of a similar analog to a luthier saying, oh, wow, there's my guitar. That's how it sounds when someone's playing it, you know? (laughs) Mm -hmm. That must must be a pretty cool moment for you. Do you, I I don't know. Does it affect you in that way when, when you, when you get to see other people? musicians playing your guitars oh yeah it's you know it's it's awesome it's great i i would also say that a lot of my clients are not professional musicians Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know they're uh they're they're just like to pick at home and the the enjoyment that they get out of the guitar uh and and, you know uh, a, a lot of them would tell you this that they're you know they're not great guitar players, but yeah. they get a lot of joy out of it. And if they get a lot of joy out of out of playing one of my guitars, then you know that's what really makes me happy too. <laughs> well, I can understand that. I mean, Ed will correct me on this, I'm sure, but I don't think I'm a great guitar player. I think I'm a good <laughs> guitar player, and I still like when I when I connect with my instrument. I don't need to be an amazing guitar player to connect to my instrument or to know like when I'm playing the you know avian Michael Bashkin created guitar that I'm playing something really special and it's it sounds better than that other thing that I used to play (laughs) you know like I I know that and it makes it makes me a better guitar player too it makes me constantly try to be a guitar player like even up upgrading to to this guitar made me a better guitar player because a, mm-hmm. I appreciated the instrument more. B, I got way more into it, and C, it just sounds better. So I'm just naturally going <laughs> to sound better too. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a good point. And I, uh, you know, com- uh, somebody said to me, I don't know who I can attribute this original quote to, but that uh, comparison is the thief of joy. 
And if you're constantly comparing yourself, you know, your guitar playing to somebody else, there'll always be somebody better than you. And there'll always be somebody who's not as good as you. So you just do your own thing the best you can and, uh, and keep moving forward. That's absolutely true. Yeah. I, I even had somebody tell me that in, in when I was in college for a year and I was trying to be a jazz guitarist and I was not good at all. <laughs> and <laughs> and he said, you know, there's there's already yeah. there's always somebody better. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it, I never forgot that, and it kind of kind of morphed into this thing of like, yeah, okay, I can, I can, you know, beat myself up for not being as good as this person, or I can just be happy and explore on my own. You know, that's that's infinitely more fun. I agree. So. I sure. I remember a, a a friend of mine told me that he's a, a bass player. Friend of mine said that when he went to see Victor Wooten play. Um, and he had been a bass player his whole life, like since he was, you know, in middle school, he picked it up. And he was a fantastic bass player, like really, truly amazing bass player. And he went to see Victor Wooten and he he left the concert and he's like, I quit. I'm, I quit. I mean, he didn't end up actually quitting. He actually yeah. plays bass full time for a living now. But I was like, how is that your attitude? Like, how are you not inspired to like do? I mean, there's always going to be somebody better than you. Exactly. Like you said, yeah. and you should yeah. take that and go, wow, yeah. well, here's something I can learn from this person. <laughs> sure. But it, uh, I, at first, and I get this when I go to guitar shows, you know, I can, it's kind of a, combination of inspiration and intimidation you know and it's mm. it's what you do with that information and uh, how you respond to it that's important yeah absolutely i can and that's i think that's the attitude i take now is like okay like i can i can sit here and powder i can see this person and be inspired to pick up my instrument and start playing so i think that's mm -hmm. i've i've changed that over the years i used to be especially with bass i used to be very uh very uh, self-conscious and and jealous of other people who were better than me, and I think I've definitely changed that over the years. So, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. Um, well, uh, thanks so much for spending this time with us and our audience today. This has been uh, this has been such, it's been so great catching up with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Likewise. Where well, can, I hope uh, to see you guys back out on the road soon. Yeah. yeah. We hope so too. <laughs> we hope to not, at least not, in some capacity. Not too soon. Yeah. Not too yeah. soon. Not too soon. <laughs> when you're ready. As soon as that vaccine's out there, Michael, yeah. we'll be heading your way, and we'll be calling you and right. meeting you for lunch. And um, where can people find Excellent. more of your uh, more of more information about your work and uh, in your uh, podcast and everything like that? Well, I I have a website that I never update, but all the information's on there. <laughs> That's just bashkinguitars.com. Uh, you can also um, find me on Instagram at bashkin underscore guitars. Um, I'm not really active on Facebook, uh, but I do have a, an account on there. And then um, also you can just go right to the fretboard journal uh, my the podcast is available on you know all podcasting platforms, so you can get it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You don't need to go to the Fretboard Journal, but there are there are links, uh, and it comes out once a month. And so that's that's how people can find out more information if they'd like to. Cool. Well, I dropped those links in the chat, so everyone can follow who's watching live, and we'll put them in our show notes on our website. All right. Um, awesome. One more question for you, and this is something we ask sure. everybody. Um, okay. If you were to have any superpower, what would it be? Oh, Anything that's, that's at such all. such a tough... <laughs> <laughs> I know nobody likes this I question. Would, <laughs> yeah. I'd probably say flying. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I like that. It's got to. It's got to be flying. That would be. That'd Same. be hard to beat. That's Ed's. That's Ed's. <laughs> that's choice. mine too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just there's something about the freedom of flying for me that would be like, oh, that'd be so nice. <laughs> yeah, fair sure. choice. And convenient. And convenient. Yep. Too. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't have to worry about getting COVID on an airplane if you can fly. You just fly to all your locations. Done. Yep. Good to go. That's true. <laughs> Done. Yes. So, so many advantages. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll say uh, goodbye for now. And um, we look forward to, again, hopefully seeing you soon. And uh, we'll share the info with everybody. And uh, 
in until next time, uh, we will uh, we will wish you well. Stay safe out there, okay? Yeah. Thanks, you too. It was great to see both of you. Thanks, uh, Michael. Stay safe, be well, and I look forward to uh, seeing you hopefully sooner rather than later. Absolutely. But not too soon. Yeah. Not too soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. All right. Bye. You guys take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I think that's like the 2020 slogan. Hashtag not too soon. Not too soon. Yeah. <laughs> not too soon. <laughs> that's a great one. <laughs> I'm going to start using that on all my Instagram Yeah, posts. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, that was so nice catching up with him. I'm so glad to hear that his business has picked up. I mean... Yeah, I've always wondered what happens to like the kind of... Like any kind of artist, because I, I would yeah. I would argue that l- luthiery is an art. And oh, yeah. the arts tend to suffer during times like this. So I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm happy that it... It um it didn't hurt his business any really. You know, the pandemic has done so many crazy things to so many industries. Like, who would have thought that real estate prices would have been are skyrocketing like they are? I mean, <laughs> right. we all were kind of expecting them to go down, but they are doing the opposite, which is it doesn't make any sense to me. I'm like, how many would afford a house right now? But. But like he said, no one's going on vac- big vacations, and I mean everyone's home. That's why I bought bought my guitar, my my Guild Starfire electric. Oh, yeah? um, I I said I would buy myself an electric when we stopped touring, and that time was now, so I bought it. <laughs> so it makes sense. Um, yeah, it totally does. Yeah, or or uh, um, someone was telling us that fabric fabric has gone up, like fabric oh. stores have gotten very busy well, too. I wonder if it's because a lot of people are taking up new the like like crafting hobbies at home and yeah. starting Etsy shops and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but on the other side of that, I mean, California is going into a lockdown uh, tonight, effective at midnight. I'm not sure if you guys heard. Um, I heard about that. Yeah. So it's it's really kind of scary because there's not any government assistance to offset that. So I don't really understand this this whole thing personally but i i get i mean it's really the hospitals are like we we've this has to happen because they're at you know 11 percent even here in san diego and Mm -hmm. they're like if there's some major disaster i don't know like an earthquake (laughs) like (laughs) which we felt this morning where would everybody go they wouldn't have anywhere to go so i get why they're doing it but you know, we were actually at a winery last night, and it was a, a really beautiful winery called Castelli Vineyards here in mm-hmm. Ramona. And, you know, we're sitting outside doing a little wine tasting, and um, the bartender there is a friend of ours, and he's like, well, I guess, I guess I'm out of a job effective oh, tonight. And that's his job is bartending, and they're shutting down for three weeks. He's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, how do you just... <sighs> not have an income for three weeks all of the sudden. Yeah. So there are people that are really affected by this. And I, yeah, my heart goes out to them. I that's mean, a choice that I would, I would not want to make. Like that's what I think s- some States are like, this is the, this is the impossible choice. This is the Kobayashi Maru. Like what I have to choose between this and this, and they both are terrible, but I have to choose one. You know, yeah. It's, I just it wish sucks. there would be um, some government assistance to help, but yeah. I get ugh, that just probably doesn't exist. Also, so what else do you do? Also, yeah. can you please explain what Kobayashi Maru is? <laughs> Sorry, it's a Star <laughs> Trek reference. <laughs> I, it was a. Tr- I think it was a. It was a, a situation where the uh, where Captain Kirk had to make an had to make an impossible choice like he had to choose Mm. one thing or another but he's like no there's a third way if if i remember correctly isn't Um, that like the entire 2020 like just constantly (sighs) having having to choose between two options and they both suck yes (laughs) yes that has been the whole year i swear i've had to do this so much like do i go do i say 
like, do I go help my parents who are going to need me to quarantine with them and help them through their, <laughs> their, you know, the open heart surgery or in or do I stay with my, <laughs> my, my boyfriend and, and who is now my fiance and quarantine with him for two months? Like, what do I do? <laughs> it's yeah. like, that's the thing. Like, do we go on tour? <laughs> uh, do we go and play the show and, and risk ourselves and, and actually make money? Or do we stay at home and not make the money, but don't know how we're going to pay our bills? It's just like, just yeah. constant. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, it sucks. Hopefully it'll be over soon. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. When when you, when you, uh, when you we were talking with Michael and you guys, uh, shifting gears here for a second, um, you were talking about, like, how how uh, that bass player had, like, saw Victor Wooten. Yeah. And he said, oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm always reminded of, of Oscar Peterson um, and that story. And he is asked for for anybody who doesn't know Oscar Peterson is arguably, although I would say inarguably, the best jazz pianist who ever lived. Mm. I mean, if you watch him play, it's it's like alchemy. I it 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 just breaks my brain watching him play the piano. It's incredible. And when he was young, he went to see Art Tatum, who at the time was arguably the world's greatest jazz pianist. And again, if you watch Art Tatum, you'll be like, yeah, okay, I get it. He is amazing. And Oscar Peter went, Oscar Peterson went to see him and said, nope, that's it. I quit. I can't. There's nobody better than Art Tatum. Huh. There's nobody better than him. And, but he, of course it was the same thing. It's like he couldn't stay away. Mm-hmm. And picked it up later, and I think probably surpassed Art Tatum in his skill level. And so I think it's just, I think you get that initial shock, especially if you're just learning an instrument and then you see somebody amazing. Mm-hmm. You get that initial shock, and then it t- then it wears off after a while, and you're like, no, wait a minute, I could do this. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and my famous story of that is a time that I had to be in a round with Alicia Michelli in Nashville. You've heard me tell this story. Mm-hmm. And, and Alicia Michelli is arguably one of the best singers that... Oh, she's fantastic. I know, yeah. And, you know, we're I'm used to being in rounds in Nashville with, with uh, singers that I think might be a little bit better than me, and it doesn't really daunt me. But I... Because, um, again, I just typically am like, well, I mean, they're doing their thing. I'm doing my thing. Like, it, it, we're just different. It doesn't... That doesn't mean that... And, like, what is the, them being a better singer? Maybe they it doesn't necessarily mean they have a better wider range. Like maybe they can do some runs and I can't really do runs. I I don't know what it Mm -hmm. means, but it's just like a feeling you get. And, um, so anyway, I would be in rounds like this with people and there's typically three of us in a round in Nashville and you go song, 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 song. And I went to do this one songwriter round and it was just me and Alicia Michelli. And I was like, well, this is not fair because it was fair. just her than me than her than me. And I got really nervous and it wasn't because I was nervous about playing in front of the audience. I just felt really insecure for the first time in a long time because she's just such a good singer. And, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, and I, I got up there and I was just like, shut up. And I got up there and I, I think I held my own and yeah. I don't think, I don't think anybody in the audience was like, wow, but that girl's a way better singer than that girl. <laughs> I mean, maybe they did, but maybe there were people in the audience that were like, yeah, but I like her songs better. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. It doesn't matter though. <laughs> you just and get I mean, up and she do doesn't it. put that attitude out there because she's a sweetheart she's yeah. one of the nicest people she doesn't like automatically put that no attitude out there this I'm was better completely than you. me not her yeah. <laughs> she's <is> awesome <laughs> she's an amazing <laughs> human <laughs> and we had so much fun like that was one of the most memorable rounds turns out at the end Aww. of the day we just i didn't even know her that well i just really enjoyed her musicianship and yeah i mean she's she she sings backup for keb mo you guys that's how good yeah. she is <laughs> and um but it happens to everybody. Like, that's the thing. You you get that shock of like, oh, man, hold, wait a minute. Well, and obviously, <laughs> Rock Marcello, who's the host of that show, put me with her because he thought I could hold my own with her. Yeah. And yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I could have been like, oh, I quit. But no. <laughs> Just get up no. and do your thing. Learn. You learn. 
from people yeah. you think are better than you. And I've done that my whole life. I've always played with musicians I think are better than me because I want to be on, keep rising to their level, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the be- that's the most fun part. Like you, Ed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, with songwriting, too. Like, you know, I'm writing with you. I'm like, oh, wow, okay, I can... I, there are so many things that I didn't know, you know, yeah. and and that, that I pick up, and even and singing, obviously, like you're a much better singer than I am. But <laughs> well, sing- I don't know about that. But, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but like, but singing with you for five years and being right next to you doing these things, I've definitely picked up on things like breath control stuff, yeah, and how to end notes and like stylistic things, like all these things just by osmosis. You know, cool. that's that's part of it. You're right. Like when you when you perform with someone who is uh, who you recognize as more skilled than you, then it's an opportunity to learn these things like um, like just just from being next to that person and, and doing the stuff. Yep. You know, I think that's the best that's the best part of of yeah, challenging yourself and, and playing with somebody who's better than you for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, which is why I think I've improved on guitar so much. Yeah, absolutely. And you actually teach me things too. Ed's <laughs> giving me lessons on on how to become a producer right now, and it's like <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah, I'm actually super proud of myself for what I'm learning from Ed, even though I forget half of what he t- tells me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a matter of repetition, like yeah. you know, that's all. But yeah, it is it is, it is fun to like. Try it and like, hey, here's I have all I I know all of these things I don't get to tell anybody. <laughs> Yay, winning! <laughs> so, um, all right, so let's move on to some show and tell. Cool. And uh, I love I how talk, is... that talk with Michael Bashkin just like inspired that whole long rant between us. I know. That's why that's why we do this. Yeah. Again, it's like being in the car. Yeah, it is like being in the car. This is what we would do, you guys, in our nine hour travels between yeah. shows. <laughs> that's exactly this that is exactly what we would yeah, do. Yeah, we would listen to a podcast and then we'd talk about it for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> um well, I think it was your turn this week. Yeah. For show and tell. Mm-hmm. So what um what photo did you bring? This week. Oh, uh, well, this one's really special yeah. um, for many reasons. So this was one of our, this is a photo taken right after one of our first full band w- shows as Wither Word. Mm-hmm. Um, Stephanie did play the show with us. Unfortunately, she was not in this photo because she had already left and and the photographer was like, oh, we need a group shot of you guys. And we were like, oh, <laughs> Stephanie's gone. But we took one anyway. And um, the reason that, that and we're going to, play a, a video with her right um with of this yes. show okay so we will play the video so you'll get to hear and see stephanie in the video um but yeah this this photo is particularly special because you'll notice a, a young man crouching in the front uh, and he's holding the so far phoenix show and that is our friend chad and we've mentioned chad on the show before because of um of the, I think it was the bonus, or maybe we have, I don't know. Yeah, it was Thanksgiving because we talked about the rubber chicken. Yeah, okay. The rubber chicken story <laughs> involved Chad, and here he is. And Chad, unfortunately, passed away um, really suddenly. He only played three shows with us, and we invited mm-hmm. him to be our official percussionist for Wither Word. And then he died of um, heart issues. And it was really sudden and really, really tragic. And he was such a magical staple of the Phoenix music community. Oh, yeah. Like everybody around here was was devastated when he passed away. Absolutely. Dev- one of the nicest humans you'll ever meet. Mm-hmm. And fantastic musician. Great singer, songwriter, too. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we met him. I think we met him at, at Janie's in Cave Creek and he sat in with us and yeah. he just, he sat in with us, started playing percussion and we're like, oh my God, you're amazing. You want to come yeah. do these shows. So we, luckily <laughs> we have a few recordings with Chad, even though we only did a couple of shows. And that's true. Yeah, we did. We had the one with him at the Valley Bar. Yeah. Um, the video and yep. the uh, recording from that. And then the, at So Far, which is actually a pretty, pretty nice video Yeah. too. Um, that we had from there, but yeah, it was really sad because it it he was a um yeah he was a he's a, he was a super nice guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to talk with him a little bit before the Valley Bar show, and he was really just loved. I think 
you know, really like to get to know people and excellent percussionist. Mm-hmm. Like it's yeah. So very, yeah. Uh, it was a little, it was very sad when he, we heard he'd passed away. Yeah. But, um, th- we do still have this memory of him at, at our first so far show and Phoenix's first so far show, as far as I remember. That's right. It was Phoenix's first. This is where we also met Emma. Yeah. Um, this and the first time Karen Gallagher, who took this photo, which oh, is another right. reason I chose this photo, because of who oh. took it. That's that's where we met her? Yep. Karen Gallagher oh. was the hired photographer for this so far <laughs> show. And she took um, photo, some wonderful photos of us um, during our performance. And then she took this photo afterwards. And, um, and oh. she was like, she emailed me the photos and she said, you're so photogenic. Oh my God. You're like the dream model. And I was like, Oh, well let's go, let's go shooting sometime if you want. Um, I, I like to model for fun. And she's like, Oh my God, seriously, let's do it. So we, uh, and that was what, four years ago. We have like, um, if you go to my Instagram page, which is vagabond voice, a lot of you guys already um, follow me there, but you'll see a lot of Karen's magical photos. But this is like the first one, and it's got Chad in it. <laughs> and yeah, the show the show was great. Um, so far is if you're not familiar with it, is an organization that does um, concerts, um, like short concerts for musicians all around the world. So they usually mm-hmm. have three musicians play at each show, and everyone plays three or four songs, and um, you don't really get paid. So the musicians don't really get paid. So just know that going in when you're paying paying the ticket price. Um, sometimes they get a little bit, but it's not very much, and I just need to disclose that because um, a lot of people don't know. So you should know. It doesn't don't decide if you want to go with that knowledge. Uh, total. I'm not saying don't go because of that. Do with it what you will. Yeah, do with it what you will. <laughs> but um, we've done we've done a few so far's, and they're always really great shows. You meet really cool people. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, Karen Gallagher, and yeah, and our friend Emma, who's um, Cat Mask Girl. You've seen yep. her in Cat Mask. Mm-hmm. And posing with us here and there and popping into the chat. And she's got her own Instagram page. So just a lot of magical things came out of this this show. And, and um, it's nice, you know, when you have loved ones in particular that have passed away to have these photos as memories. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so we've queued up the uh, video, the So Far video. They actually had a film crew there shooting a video um and got it to us and um it's it's another really nice memory because it was pretty good pretty good video it was a really fun show and uh yeah. so we decided that we would show this video to you uh during today's show and so here it is Fills me with ease till I hardly breathe it Cannot be tamed, it spits out its rage With the thick bright flames It comes when I see rain To take its revenge Won't stop till you're dead You have some fire to choke on You think you can cope on To put out your smoke on Dragon inside of me When I don't want to be That is a shame That's what I believe You don't believe I don't give a damn Dragon inside of me Share the mask 
share the mask that I wear. If you don't believe, I don't give a damn. The dragon inside of me is who I really am. Right. So that was our performance of The Dragon at So Far Phoenix. That was in, uh, I guess, 2016 would have been. Because mm-hmm. um, I had my, uh, I had my uh, Epiphone. And I'm playing my Martin there, which now is what yeah. Ed's playing. Gosh, like, this, is <laughs> this is how musicians chronicle their lives. Like, okay, what guitar was I playing? Okay, it was 2016. <laughs> well, also, it's kind of hilarious how we, like, lose track of our guitars. Like, yeah, like yeah. You, do, you do know that Stephanie has your Martin, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, for a while, I was like, I have the Avian. Ed has my Martin. <laughs> Stephanie has his Martin. But they're in the same case, so whenever I get it, some they're, half the time I think it's mine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's the part I forget. Yeah. I'm like, I think my red one is still in. Although I, I played that red guitar recently. And yeah. I was like, wow, you know, every time I play the guitar, it doesn't sound great, sure, but it sounds way better than I remembered it sounding every time. <laughs> it's always surprising to me. That is surprising. Yeah. <laughs> and then I've got my seagull here, so I don't know. It's just like, yeah, <laughs> like, where are these things? <laughs> we have a lot of music instruments. Yeah, and oh, then man. Stephanie's playing her, her acoustic violin because... Mm. It's possible that we maybe can't... one of her pedals died or something like... Or maybe uh, they... I would say they, they didn't, didn't want... Inputs. Oh, maybe. Or maybe they didn't want it all, all electric instruments yeah, or I something. Yeah, I thought that, but you and Patrick are playing electric. Yeah, we play electric. So, yeah, it might have been like a like there was not enough inputs for her. Because uh, they typically with so far shows, they don't expect as many musicians playing electronic instruments mm-hmm. usually they they try to have you play more uh acoustic stuff because they, they a lot of times they're not even there's not even a pa at, at the concert right and so um i think the the mixer may have may not have had enough inputs okay for her that uh, sounds thing. familiar but i'll ask her <laughs> <laughs> yeah just, just like shout out the door real quick and ask her. Let us know. <laughs> She's apparently there <laughs> in the other room. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. Chad. So you guys get that's to hear Chad. Chad and keep his memory alive and visit that. Yeah. I mean, it's nice that we get to visit those videos sometimes, you know? Yeah, I'm glad we got some really good video of him. Like I was watching mm-hmm. it and like, oh yeah, there's some good shots of him in there. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's nice. Um, all right. So, well, we'll, we'll wrap this up here with a song, but before we do, Ah. um, we want to again, thank, uh, Evie. Yay! For becoming our new sponsor. This That's is not super EV, exciting. This microphone. These are not EV equipped. <laughs> but they will equipment. be next week. <laughs> they definitely will be next week. So uh, keep an eye out for that and for an official announcement on our Facebook and everything. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you would like to uh, get some bonus content from our uh, podcast, um, please check out our Patreon page. Uh, we've been churning out a bunch of stuff. 
on our Patreon page. And, you know, we, I, I communicate with everybody on there pretty regularly. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, we have open threads and we have bonus concerts that happen before the show at, a at, a t- um, 1230 Pacific so you can get access to those and even if you missed it you could still get access after the fact and quick and um, we know some of you are not getting those announcements because Patreon is kind of I don't know why they're there it's it's weird. yeah it's weird but anyway we we decided today that we are now going to start a um, crimes against folk pa- Facebook group that you will all be invited to and for patrons. only for patrons yeah. So um, you'll get that link probably in your email. So make sure you join the Facebook group because as soon as we do the pre-show concert, we're going to drop that link in there. And so you guys will um, be able to just get the announcement that way on the Facebook group instead of in missing it in your email. Yep. <laughs> But in December, we're also going to start doing some bonus stuff, like the tips and tricks, as we mentioned before, moving to Patreon. Um, they're still available at the $5 level, um, but we're going to start putting those on Patreon uh, this month. And uh, we're also doing things like our Behind the Song. That's going to be a new thing that's starting this month yeah. on Patreon, um, which we just filmed the first one, and it was pretty... It was actually really fun. It, <laughs> it was, was fun, cool. and it it would we really it really jogs your memory. You know, we had to think we the first yeah. one's going to be the anchor. So yeah. if you're not a patron and you want to hear the story, go join our Patreon page. It's only five bucks a month, and you'll get to hear yeah. the entire story behind anchor. And we really started remembering things that mm-hmm. that had just kind of gone to the back of our brains somewhere. So it was pretty <laughs> exciting. And Ed even pulls up the session and talks about the session, which is cool. Yep. So you can see an actual behind the scenes. You'll get to see all the tracks and all the hear stuff's isolated and we talk about the different parts of the song it'll be really fun so yeah and we'll we'll share those in the facebook group as well so if if you miss them on patreon we'll we'll make mm-hmm. sure so if you do sign up for that five dollar tier you're gonna get it in the patreon um inbox and then also just to make sure you got it we're also going to share it to the facebook group which i'm going to work on today and, or this week so you guys will have that soon and you will have, uh, there are higher tiers as well. There's a producer level tier that um, you get access to uh, um, post show, um, post shows that we do immediately after these shows stop broadcasting. So you can kind of just hang out and chat with us, ask any questions you might have. Um, and there's also, um, uh, th- we're going to start introducing merch soon. Mm-hmm. So all of that will be um, available on patreon so go to patreon.com slash crimes against folk and uh, you can find out more there yeah um but we'd like to end uh with a song and what song would you like to do i'm sorry i didn't put one down there. i think that's usually my job and i didn't do it <laughs> i don't know if you guys have any uh, requests, throw them out there. We'll see if we remember them. <laughs> this seems to be the issue with not performing as much as we used to, <laughs> like at all, is we forget these songs yeah. that we'd been doing for so long. It's such a crazy scenario, but whatever. <laughs> um, we just forget the lyrics, or I forgot the lyrics in the pre show today to one of the songs that I've done like 80 billion times. So <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. But if you guys have any, um, if you have any questions, throw them out there. Alice wants to hear what I knew. We can end with that. Ed, are you up for that? Yeah. Okay. There. I actually had a question for you, Ash. Oh, okay. Um, I know you are a a, a, a vegetarian. Uh, I'm yeah. Um. <laughs> well, I eat fish, so I'm a pescatarian. I guess pescatarian. Sorry. Yep. Um, <laughs> it just sounded really. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> no, I am. I am. Um, would you oh boy eat lab grown meat whoa in singapore uh they i read an article recently in singapore they have just um legalized the uh distribution of lab grown chicken to uh restaurants and stuff like that and so now people are going to start because they have to basically import everything in Singapore, like all kinds of meat, they have to uh, they have to import it. So they're kind of they were kind of accelerating the uh, development of lab grown meat, uh, which is harvested from a living uh, chicken, um, and they just harvest cells from a chicken and grow it. Grow the in, meat uh, or grow a chicken? 
they grow, <laughs> they grow the meat. <laughs> That's so. I no, I don't think no. Well, I don't know. This it's not. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting question, isn't it? Because it's not technically a chicken, but it kind of is, and it came. It from just a chicken. sounds gross. <laughs> <laughs> Like, uh, ethics don't have any part of my decision-making process here. <laughs> like, I have so many more questions that come from this. Qu- like, is there fat in this chicken? Is it fat-free? Because I'm not going to lie. That's one of the reasons I don't eat meat is because I'm so yeah. grossed out by fat. <laughs> yeah, you're I don't right. like to eat the fat, which I know is the opposite of most people. They love the fat. And I just, right. ugh, I can't stand it. So that's why I don't. <laughs> and I love animals, too. And so it's hard for me. I look at cows and I think they're cute so it's hard for me to eat them but right. Brad looks at cows and thinks they're cute and then loves to eat them so whatever do your <laughs> own thing but <laughs> but yeah is there fat on it <laughs> that's the thing I'm not sure like that's that's you could probably control it uh, when while you grow it so um oh I just I just thought it was an interesting question because I thought about that I'm like well I know that one of the main reasons a lot of people are vegetarians is for ethical reasons it's because they don't want to kill animals right and in this case you wouldn't really kill an animal right you just so but you guys is chicken really that good <laughs> Come on, it's not that good. Well, that's a whole other question. <laughs> <laughs> like a burger, and it depends I how you it. make it. Yeah, it's a good piece of steak, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Just, this is what I'm. This is why I'm a vegetarian. It's like I'd rather just have the friggin' tofu. <laughs> right. You don't want any of the. You don't want to deal with all the questions. You just like I just I'll don't just... like meat that much. <laughs> right. I think. I think I would try it. Would you? I think I would try it. Mm-hmm. I. I would be. I would probably try it out of pure curiosity. Yeah. Well, I mean, because we have lots of great alternatives now, like the Impossible Meats, the Beyond Meats are starting to really pick up in popularity. Yeah, yeah. Which is great. I do, you know, I do the, I love the the Beyond Burgers, the Impossible Burgers, I mean. Yeah, I've heard those are really good. Yeah, and you know what they don't have? Mm. Fat. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I I'm love them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's great though, I th- and I think just having another option might be kind of interesting for people who maybe you know it's not a they would have no problem eating meat if it didn't if it meant not killing an animal. I'm just curious if pe- if that's an option for people. It it is it is really weird concept to think about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is weird. That kind of so. that kind of through me there <laughs> um although yeah barb says barbara says sounds fishy peter <laughs> richard says soylent green oh, we're not there yet peter we're not at the <laughs> soylent green stage yet and then <sighs> alice says our company's supporting development of lab-grown meat chicken beef etc huh yeah okay that's what i figured well um so we'll do so we'll we'll end with what I knew. We do have I can do that. um uh we do have the anchor as our as our uh behind the song series and which you guys will get and if you follow some Patreon you'll get you'll get mm-hmm. the notification on that. It's I I think you're really going to like it. I, it's, yeah. I'm pretty excited about it myself. So um we'll do the anchor another time. And thank you guys. Thanks for joining us. It was again just so much fun. Yeah, fun times. Yeah, so much fun having Michael Bashkin on. One incredible, mm-hmm. incredible guy. Incredible. Yeah, super cool guy. Incredible Luthier. Don't forget to check out his his guitars and his show Luthier on Luthier. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I'll do what I knew. That sounds good. <laughs> moon revolves around the earth, the earth around the sun. The sun revolves around you because you are the one who dominates the lifetimes of thoughts I can't subdue. I had a love for both young and old, that's just what I knew. 
fire burns and also cleanses Tears do much the same Both of them were inside of you Set by a heart of flame But the fires were put out fast And tears left a sickly hue You never were the same again That's just what I knew Did I ever feel bad for the urges that I had? Were they real or misdirection? Were they given without discretion? It was the real thing I felt for you. That's just what I knew. Time heals the wounded, medicine works too. Where did you hide your bottle? I already knew. Sleepless nights and restless days, trying to hide from your sunny gaze. The past was cruel, but I was too. That's just what I knew. Did I ever feel alive? Had I already died? What is life without your voice? Did I give you a choice? It wasn't my design to fall for you. That's just what I knew. Stubbornly I toss and turn Woken by the sound Of the thought police again I must be gaining ground And so I leave a letter On the fireside for you I would have done it differently would have done for you I would have loved you differently that's just what I knew good job Ed thank you good job Ash (laughs) I love that song Thank you. That's uh, if you guys have not heard that before, it's on our album called Human Album. It's is that how we close out with it? I can't remember. It's, uh, it's no. on there. It's in the middle. Oh, one of my favorite Edward Williams songs, right there. <laughs> Edward Williams. <laughs> I can't say that. That's today. my name. Don't wear it out. I can say Ed edited it. <laughs> you can't, but I can't say my say name. Edward right here. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. Ed edited it. Yeah. Ed edited it, which is something you have to say a lot if you're me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Ed edited it. That's actually the phrase. <laughs> I had to practice. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Extra special thanks to our guest, uh, Michael Bashkin. Uh, It was really good seeing him. Check out his stuff on Mm -hmm. Instagram at Bashkin underscore guitars. Um, If you are a uh, producer-level patron, join us for the post-show on Patreon uh, right after this. This podcast will be coming out on your favorite podcast app on Tuesday, so keep an eye out for that. And uh, other than that... Oh, yeah. You guys are going to get invites to the Facebook group here pretty yep. soon. Keep an eye on your Facebook for that uh, invite for you patrons. So if you want the invite to join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash crimes against folk. Yep. And until then, 
We'll see you next time, everybody. See you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.